We're standing right outside my offices and we're underneath a birch tree. And this birch tree is about as big as birch trees get in the UK. They were probably the first real tree to get here after the ice age as the glaciers retreated. So birches are often the first colonisers of bare ground. And they usually only live about 80 years before they start to break down and fall over. And they're very light demanding. So once the birches go, other shade tolerant trees grow up underneath them and then they shade them out and they don't come back. But one of the reasons we have so much birch in the UK at the moment is because we've opened up so much land and the birches are coming in and they're taking over, especially on acidic land. The taking over on acidic land can be a, a bit of a problem in conservation, especially if you want to look after heathlands. And with the reduction in heathland management, birch is one of the trees that's now coming in and seeding onto heathland and starting to reduce that habitat type even further. But in many places they are the natural type of forest and up in Scotland, in northern Scotland, they are the dominant forest type, which is why Robbie Burns wrote about the birks of Aberfeldy. The white bark is absolutely distinctive of a birch and actually the bark is quite useful. If you're in a stick in the forest and you need to light a fire, then peeling off some of the bark of a birch, it's brilliant tinder for fire lighting. The other useful thing about birches is you can use them to make birch wine. And this was quite commonly done in past times in that you'd make a hole in the bark, the sap would come out and then you'd ferment the sap after you'd collected it. And I've had birch wines and birch spirits in Russia and they're really quite good. <laughs>